What's going on? Louis here to show you the HM3100 auto mashing. Um, auto mashing is the simplest and probably the best tool we can use to generate 2D elements once you have surfaces. So you just pick the surfaces you want to mash, set the goal element size, the mash pattern, any bias you may want, and we're good to go. So let's get right to it. In this tutorial, we'll use the channel.hm model file. So retrieve it and we'll create a base mixed mesh first. So go to the 2D page, auto mesh panel. In the size and bias sub panel, select the displayed surfaces, set the element size to 5, the mesh type to mixed, element to current component, and mesh model to interactive then click mesh. The density subpanel opens and we could use it to adjust the element density which is represented for each edge but if we don't want to change anything just click on return and we would be done with our basic mesh. However, let's learn how to deal with the various mesh control options we have. So go ahead to the delete panel, select all elements and delete them. Back to the auto mesh panel, let's test some things on one surface. Leave all options and select this surface with three fixed points. Click mesh and preview the mesh. Press F on, on your keyboard to fit the view and let's play with the element density. So activate the adjust add selector and to increase the density of any edge, just click, just left click on the number and to decrease, right click. To increase by a big amount, we can left click and hold, then tilt the mouse up. When you reach 48, just stop. Click mesh and it updates. And we can see that we now have some triangles in order to make a transition from 48 elements in the lower edge to 24 elements in the upper edge. We could also set the element density directly using this field. So set 10, then activate the set edge selector and pick the lower edge. Then click mesh and it updates. To change all the edges to that density, click set all to and click mesh. Sometimes it's easier to deal with element size than elements density. Let's say we want it a element size close to 7 units, then set that value in the element size field, activate the calculate edge selector and pick the edge. Hypermesh displays the number of elements that will yield an element size as close as possible to 7 in that edge, which in this case is 17. Click mesh to update, then go ahead and recalculate all so that all edges change to accommodate an element size of 7 and click mesh again. And we see that we have a very regular mesh, although it's a little distorted because of the fixed point points enforcing nodes. Let's change the element size to 5, recalculate all and update, then accept by clicking on return. Let's now deal with the channel's rib. Select the rib, don't change the options, and click Mesh. Change the view to the YZ plane to get a better look at it. Now we'll check the mesh quality by assessing some metrics. So go to the Checks sub-panel, click on Aspect to see the elements with an aspect ratio greater than 5. The status bar displays the maximum aspect ratio is 1.69. So go ahead and change the minimum Jacobian to 0.8 and click on it. Hypermesh highlights in red all elements with a Jacobian smaller than 0.8 and the smallest being 0.75. By clicking on the minimum and maximum angles of quads, we see that only one element violates the limits. So it's not a big deal. We'll now change the mesh pattern and check what happens. Go to the mesh style sub panel. 
we see a small icon indicating that the current mesh pattern is free unmapped. So change the mesh method to map as a rectangle and set all. The icon changes to a square to reflect the new mesh method. So go ahead, click mesh to update it. Let's check the same metrics again to see if it has improved or worsened. Check the aspect ratio. Now the maximum is 1.95. The minimum Jacobian has decreased to 0.66. And we have some elements with too high or too small angles. So overall, this mesh is worse than before. I'll change the mesh pattern back to free unmapped, but you guys could try different mesh styles to see which one fits better this rib. Let's mesh the remaining surfaces at once. So click and return, set the isometric view and click unmeshed. Then all unmeshed surfaces are selected. Click mesh to preview it. We see now that the mesh is composed almost entirely of quads, but we may want to change some to try us. So go to the mesh style sub panel and under element type, Click Toggle Surf. HyperMesh then displays the icon of the element pattern for each surface. In this case, they are all mixed. Now, now change the type to Trias, activate the Surf selector, and click, click on the symbols of these two surfaces. Then click Mesh and it updates automatically. We'll now learn how to set a bias over an edge. In the Biasing sub panel, Leave the BIOS style to linear and verify that the adjust edge selector is active. Then change the BIOS intensity of this edge to 3.0. In the same way, we change the mesh density. Then click mesh and we see that it concentrates elements on this end of the edge. We could play around by setting this intensity to 10, then activate the cal calculate edge selector, pick the same edge, and click mesh. Now try changing the bias style to bell curve that will distribute the nodes in a pattern that is symmetric across the midpoint of the edge and activate the set edge selector and on that same edge click over the bias style symbol to change it. Then click mesh and accept the mesh by clicking on return. Now move on to the other side of the channel and we'll change the mesh mode from interactive to automatic, so HyperMesh will not take us to the meshing module. Select these two surfaces and set the element size to 10, then click Mesh. It updates the mesh and we see that it transitions from an element size of 5 in the upper edges to an element size of 10. That's because we use the keep connectivity option. So it maintains all the nodes that were in shared edges. If we undid the mesh and selected break connectivity, we would see that the new mesh would not match, match the, the other one node for node. So that was it for the auto mesh panel. We covered a good part of it with the main options you need to create a good mesh. And of course, there is a lot more you can do with it, but I try to keep these videos as short as possible. So remember to subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, activate the bell, and I'll see you in the next one.